Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the appeal process, where it's going. And right now we're waiting on our um, response to the motion that was filed by Robert Sylvester Kelly and attorney Jennifer Bonjean on May 2nd. And we will be having an update on that motion filing very soon for you. But I also ran into uh, um, an interview that I think is very important about the whole R. Kelly situation with the trauma and the trauma bonds, the basis, the um, information that is going to be shared today is going to be traumatic. It is going to um, also be healing. It will further look at the sexual trauma and drama bonds in the African American community through vicarious trauma um, and spiritual trauma um, based upon post-traumatic slavery syndrome. And it's what we're fighting from within. And there were three queens on the Queens Roundtable. So you can look them up on YouTube and you'll find the full interview they are very, very intellectual. They're, they they bring a sense of understanding to what's going on with the trauma based upon what we have endured over the 500 years of existence in America. So there's a specific involvement that I want you to pay attention to. And I want you to really open your mind to figure out how we support a community knowing that we have victims who lie on the stand and are not responsible for their behavior in their own quote trauma. So it works in, it works both ways. You have positive attributes to healing through traumatic experience, and then you have manipulation through the expression of understanding, I'm going to get you back type uh, um, perpetration or manipulation. So let's just get into the video. It's very, very good. And I will love every comment that comes through. Thank you so much for being here, um, R. Kelly Nation. And let's get going. Of course, my, my heart goes out to any woman, um, especially women of color, because we oftentimes are so um, unprotected uh, in this whole thing, right? But also, um, I was very, um, I was kind of jaded by the, the, the disparity between how they dealt with the black man, R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, and how these other white counterparts, maybe not so much, and, and, and the villainization of them kind of dragging um, him through the mud with this, this Lifetime series and then doing a part one and now a part two. I really want to say that this woman compared the Epstein guy, the Playboy guy, the guy that ran the Playboy mansion and all that stuff, Hugh Hefner. And many other Elvis, she's comparing the two. Okay, well, the three to Bill Cosby and to R. Kelly. You notice that they're not in the media as much, other than the fact that, you know, the crimes were already broken down. So I was definitely, and I think I was very candid about me being, having this struggle. Watching that video yesterday, I, you know, it's almost like, you know, the fact that you do something bad or you do something malicious or what have you, you know, we heard the words cult. And mind you, you know, me being in Chicago during this time, I'm, I was the first to admit, we all knew that he had a propensity for young girls and, and sexual de deviancy. But we oftentimes let the music take over what we were you know, kind of thinking. It wasn't a big deal because it was like, yeah, you know, whatever. But, you know, he, he make fine music. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? Like there is, there is some, some, some terrible damage that irreparable damage that has been done and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And the damage in which she is speaking of happens to do 
with both victims um, and though, and in this case, Robert Sylvester Kelly, okay, the victims, because of the convictions, you know, we have to say it that way. However, we know what's really happening here. We know that R. Kelly was a victim long before these women showed up. We know that in the, in the way that life worked for him, why he saw things the way that he saw them, you know, and then a lot of people just wanted to manipulate who he was and how he was to society so that people would be drawn or swayed one way or the other in this, in this circumstance here. But let's keep listening. When I watched season one of Surviving R. Kelly, I literally had post-traumatic stress disorder for an entire year that has not subsided with all of the, the crap that people like that these um, alleged victims, whether these victims um, were saying that they were victims and, and everything that came out of that six part series last year. I am in a commitment not to watch part two. I'm not interested of part two of Survivor R. Kelly, but in terms of the, the, the toxicity and like the real dark, negative, low vibration energy that it puts out, it is infectious. It's like affecting everyone and all of the players involved. And unfortunately, I feel really, really bad for every everyone involved in it. And especially when I see these two black women fighting and, and, and in a position to fight against each other, like fight each other literally on IG Live, you know, in their own trauma. Like, you know, Dana, I, I think you brought up a point earlier. There is mental health, uh, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health dynamics at play as well um, that I, I try, try to separate myself from. But there's a lot of healing work that needs to take place with every single person involved in a situation. It's just like not um, one way that we can look at this or analyze this. But what I don't appreciate, I don't appreciate people capitalizing and making money off of black trauma and the grief of black women when we need to, you know, be um, given resources and like safe spaces to heal. But don't project that in the mass media so that million people of people can see it to see the trauma. These women are going to have to live with this when they get off camera, when this series is over for the rest of their damn lives. And you have a whole uh, entire uh, what lifetime TV network and this producer and that producer making money off of this for what purpose? That's all I got to say for now. So, and we, we touched on this yesterday when I was doing a live with uh, Dr. Voice about the Tyler Perry um, writer's room. And we know that, you know, I'm, I'm drawing a parallel here. We understand. I think he's made a lot of money off of the trauma, you know, the drama of the trauma of black women. Right. That's how I'll put it into words. It's the trauma of the drama of black women. Mm -hmm. um, the reality shows, the trauma of the drama of the black women, you know, the drama, they're always drama, they're fighting it, you know, all this stuff. We're used to seeing this. Like, you're absolutely right. It is traumatic. It is. It, it affects me. I try to distance myself from it personally. You know, as I've healed, you know, done my self-development and my self-care work, I realized that I had to build, I had to set a boundary for myself on what I was going to allow into my mental and spiritual space because it does affect me as a woman to see these young girls, you know, um, I think I've mentioned before, you know, my mom was a victim of um, childhood sexual abuse and that affected my relationship with her. Um, and it affected how she was able to mother, how she was able to connect or how disconnected she was um, towards me and my brother. Um, it was almost like we grew up in two separate households, you know what I mean? Because she mm -hmm. was a little bit different towards him than she was towards me for various reasons and so i have a direct connection a personal connection to um understanding and when i view people who have been traumatized in that way it takes me right back to my childhood when my mother was telling me these stories and and trying to um instill you know some type of fear in me because she thought that that was helpful you know and i see that 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 look on um, Azriel's face when she's and I can hear it in her voice that that screaming out like she's like ah! seek the help that you need you put yourself first because for so long you were not able to do that make sure that you put yourself first and do what you need to do 
to secure your own safety, health, and well-being. So that's kind of my take on it. It really hurt me to see that video. It, it was so, it was so hard to watch it. It was, it was. Um, we shouldn't take this lightly. This is not for entertainment purposes. This is someone's life. You know what I'm that's, saying? Like, yeah, that's definitely how I felt. Um, yes, I, I think. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm like everybody else. I, I mean, I took it and I and I had a I had a standpoint on it. Um, and and I and I would probably say I did kind of still continue to put it in the back of my mind. Kind of say, you know, there's other things that I that I could you know be concerned about. Not that it wasn't important, but I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm I'm human like everybody else. But watching the part two. And hell, this is probably why they did it, you know, for people like me, dummies like me. Watching the part two and then seeing that video yesterday, that was like gut wrenching. That video yesterday was gut wrenching. Um, from everything that you said, from her body language um, to her, you know, her fight for it was almost like that scene when Tina Turner beat up Ike. You know what I mean? It was, you know, kind of her running through the through the hotel lobby. You know, she, you could see that there was this fight for freedom in this. I don't know that 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 it was totally different. It, it um yesterday's video really shook me. It did. Jay that was well. Speaking of body language and facial expressions, I'm even having a hard time even thinking about this and having this um conversation. The women involved in this situation only. I look at. Clearly, there were conspirators and damn co-conspirators, including the inter entertainment industry. But I also have to look at R. Kelly as a victim of childhood sexual assault and abuse and trauma right. as well. And I think that also gets lost. That does not in any way justify his actions or, you know, being, uh, you know, allegedly a predator or, or, or like doing all of these allegations. I mean, clearly, <laughs> we know what it is, but um, there's a lot of healing that also needs to happen in his life as well and he is how old is he saying like over some stuff um in which he was a victim and that wasn't addressed and no, it was it wasn't part two you didn't see no, it was, i'm talking it was, about in terms of his own healing oh, okay, him, no, yep, him, him being yep. fixed himself spiritually mentally from this sexual you know, addiction right. or whatever the hell is going on that he was, you know, his own childhood sexual assault and trauma mm -hmm. because that was not intervened on. He was not supported in that as a child. It has created a ripple effect mm -hmm. in the community, you know, and directly in the lives of all of these women and affecting their families, their husbands, their, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. But now it's being projected to the masses of millions of people around the planet you know, on television and on the internet. And so we have to, at some point, get to the spiritual root of what has happened to us through our Ma'afa, through our Black African Holocaust, you know, living in hell these past 500 years under these damn devils, white supremacists, and this culture that we live in of that normalizes rape, sexual assault, and pedophilia. The bug-breaking process of the Black male you know, on the plantations and through enslavement. You know, the fact that we have, you know, during enslavement, they had whole breeding farms, entire plantations where they didn't do nothing but put a bag over your damn head and make black people breed like animals. You know, you could be having sex, getting, you know, having sex with your son or your brother, your uncle, brother and sister, et cetera, et cetera. These devils didn't care as long as, you know, black women were producing children so they can sell on the damn market. People being raped in front of each other, you know, uh, you know, uh, African, you know, black children be being forced to have sex, um, you know, with with adults on plantations and with overseers and with and with. So all of these things have been passed down. We cannot just look at we're seeing the manifestation of it and how is this 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 trauma has been passed down, this post-traumatic slavery um, syndrome and its symptoms and the root causes of it passed down generationally. We have to look at the entire picture. It's not just the R. Kelly or Azriel or this, that, and the other, or, you know, so-and-so's family, your family, my family. This is a, a issue that, like, we have been inflicted with. We have been traumatized with, and they, they fucking owe us. You know what I'm saying? They owe us. Like, 
when we talk about reparations, we're not just talking about a check. We're talking about complete and total repair. Yes, the economic piece is 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 a, a primary piece, but there's so many different things that like we need to heal from internally as a black community that they really owe us for. So yes, I'm blaming the entertainment industry. Yes, I'm I'm I'm, I'm blaming you know the Black African Holocaust in this country. These damn devils. I'm blaming you know white supremacy, and I'm blaming those of us within the black community who have allowed this stuff to go on to people that we know about or within the family. Nobody's saying anything about it. So I'm gonna just hush for a second and and collect myself um, and let y'all continue. I might step away for a minute and calm down and breathe and come back. But I want to put this out there to everybody who's watching. I know, I know people don't like this and this is a very uncomfortable truth, but we all have a predator or two within our midst. And I want you to understand that it takes a village. It takes a village to enable a predator. And I think a film that really uh, gets into this, if you guys have never seen it, I would encourage you to watch it on the, um, I think it was the Boston Globe or one of those papers that broke the whole scandal with the Catholic Church. And what they found, and this movie kind of highlights how they started investigating it, is that it was a conspiracy in the town to keep providing children to this predatory church uh, leaders. And it was almost like an unspoken thing. People knew that it was happening and they were still sending their boys over there to be altar boys with those men who it was rumored to be accused of abusing children. And it was so deep that the police were covering it up. The church was, of course, covering it up. The communities were covering it up and the families. OK, I feel that we need to start holding ourselves accountable. If you see some stuff that doesn't look right, question it. It doesn't mean that, you know, it can mean the, the, the different difference between life and death. And it's a way to break cycles. You know when something's not right. If a child doesn't want to be around a certain person and, and they, 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 they're going off and stuff like that, don't send them along. Find out why that child is reacting that way. We need to, we need to come, we need to form, um, I don't know what the word is, but we need to form an environment in our community where we can take care of our children. These young women were not protected because as we've seen, I didn't watch those things because they're too traumatic for me, the part one and part two of Surviving R. Kelly, because I feel like I kind of got the gist of the story. But I, I want us to be aware that he did have a sex ring and many people were enabling him to get these girls and do these things to these girls. And there were many people around him that were partaking in it. And the parents need to be held responsible, too. They don't get a pass. You handed your daughters over to this man in exchange for fame and fortune that you thought you were going to get. And now you're getting it. But at the expense of this child's life and her livelihood and her mental well-being, that is inexcusable. And I'm going to leave it at there. If you ladies have anything else that you want to sum up. Um. What the Catholic Church has covered up in is sickening uh, people. It is our job to protect our children. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. I agree with but that. I will say, mm -hmm. I will say that, like, no black man ever gets a pass for being a pedophile or preying on a, a child, male or female, okay? No black That's woman scary. gets ever. You know, I, I am a strong proponent of, of um, stonings and public <laughs> uh, punishment, okay, in those types of situations. Um, and in addition to that, we, because like that, that, that behavior has to get cut off at the root, at the neck, if we are going to continue, because it is up to us to protect our children at all costs. And I'm saying that in order for us to rectify the situation, we have to also approach it from a historical standpoint. So we have an awareness to know like how, what this has come from and how this has been passed down generation, generationally, so we can identify it, address it. And cut it off at his neck. That's what I'm going to say. I, I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm the first to say it, right? Like, I mean, I, I, I knew. And um, uh, I, I think just, I think I'm like many people. You you know what I mean? It was one of those things that we accepted for some, because if that was not the case, he would not have been a top artist for all of those years, because this is not new. This is 30-year-old, 40-year-old information. Now, personally, right. I stopped that. Yeah, so, and, I, so I, and, I, and I think, you know, and, and I'm just comfortable. That, I mean, 
and I will tell you, we knew. People people in Chicago, I mean, like, we knew, knew. Now, I, I mean, like, you can have people that are in L.A. or whatever, but people, we knew. It wasn't like and this. I was in D.C. And it was just accepted. So, definitely yeah. my apologies. And um, uh, I will say this, that my mindset, and, and, and that's called evolution, right? You know, yes. Yes. I mean, that's big of you to admit to your part in it. Um, And I think, you know, the point of me bringing this up to the community is because I know that we know there are those of us right now who are watching this, who know that there's something going on in your in your situation, your surrounding. Speak up. We have to do this in order to put in. Yes. Like, yeah. we cannot be complicit in this anymore. If, you know, Cardi B, or whatever, talking about she drugging men or whatever, we can't yeah. support people like that. Because yeah. what that does is continue, people continue to abuse us in the community, whether they be a part of the community or not. Yeah. We're, we're giving them permission to mm-hmm. abuse us. And so we as a community have to stand up and, and, and reinforce our boundaries. And it starts at home. When you see something, say something. If, if you see that there's a child or a woman who's going through something, embrace them. Now, there's only so much you can do at a certain point, so I will admit that. But when there are entertainers and people in the media, we do not have to support them. We can speak loudly by, by mm-hmm. removing our support and our dollars from their um, their creative endeavors. Yeah, I could have also I could have done more as well. Um, and I could have especially done more to, to bring awareness to folks to say, like, listen, This artist is putting out information or being used by the music industry and getting paid to feed us some BS that's more dysfunctional that's really going to hurt us. Like We have to come up with psychological and mental defenses from these sick, demented, demonic messages that are coming through the entertainment industries. And then also look at the damn CEOs. Who's financing this? Who's putting money in people's pockets? Who's mass projecting this as well? So... We need to fight the enemy within our homes and within ourselves and within the community. And we need to simultaneously be fighting and pushing back from those forces who benefit and capitalize off of dysfunction, grief and trauma in the black community. So, um, you know, I was just thinking about this, too. Um, I'm going to put a call out there to the audience. We need to let Lifetime know that they should have, I don't know if they already do, someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but they should have something set up to help these women deal with this trauma because they are definitely making money off of this. And some portion of that, I would say maybe 25, I don't know, C. Simone, you're the finance person. Some portion of that should be going to um the you know treatment for these women because they're definitely capitalizing off of like you said jay this is about reparations okay you want to prepare you want to repair and help these women you don't just want to continue to exploit them otherwise lifetime executives you are also a part of the problem in exploiting these young black women and girls there was some disparity with that and we can just touch that really quickly so originally um from what I understand, of course, there were supposed to be, um, you know, monies uh, with Me Too movement and with the uh, and with the victims and the R. Kelly, right? And so that was supposed to be with the first one. Supposedly, allegedly, one of the reasons why Drea Kelly, his uh, wife, the the one that he, uh, the woman that he did marry, her reasoning for not wanting to be involved in um, in R. Kelly surviving R. Kelly to the reckoning was because there was lack of support, emotional support, mental support for the the, the victims um, of the first one, and so that's why she decided that's that's the reason that she said that she decided to not be involved in part two. Um, with that being said, of course, they are making tons of money off of this. Um, and yes, there should be something that goes to the healing. I am not sure what that looks like at this point in time. No one ever disclosed whether or not they were or they weren't. Now, Drea Kelly has also been uh, known to not be the most factual um, person not that she's a liar, that's not what we're saying, but 
things have not always turned out the way that she explained it. So not really sure what that looks like for them and if the victims are being able to um, get uh, help with that. So nobody's really Interestingly, sure. Yeah, thank you. And again, these are allegations. These are, you know, women who who come out as victims. Um, I'm not believing or I'm not saying that I completely disbelieve everything that's out there either because, you know, I have a very, very strong opinion um, and the evidence is clear as day. The writing is on the wall in terms of like R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it one more again. The calls to this national rape crisis hotline increased over 40 percent after the airing of Surviving R. Kelly 2 part two documentary at the very, very beginning of this year. And if you know, like, remember the first, um, series came out, which was in six parts came out around this time last year. Okay. So look at how other women and men, people are being traumatized by just even listening to all of this stuff. You know, there is a such thing as vicarious trauma where you, if you, if you're exposed to something, that you know someone else's pain they're talking about their pain and their trauma and if even if you don't have your own trauma that is similar to that experience of another the person who's speaking about theirs you it still impacts you it still impacts you and so i'm also concerned about these viewers i'm concerned about you know young girls or young young boys black people in, in particular who don't have the language or the confidence to actually speak up about this stuff and they're seeing all of these memes they're seeing all of this drama you know, play out on TV and on the on the internet waves, what's going to happen to them? What about their healing? What about, you know, the support that they may need um, based off all of these, you know, allegations and, and things that are coming out around this particular situation? What happens then? I also feel like, you know, the network needs to take some responsibility in terms of that as well. And this is, this is about the Survivor R. Kelly Part 2 documentary, but it's not only about that. I had to stop watching Love & Hip Hop years ago because it really portrays black women looking hella hella crazy who uh, many of them have emotional and mental issues that also need to be addressed that is like also traumatizing other viewers as well i agree i don't watch that stuff like i don't watch it and i used to be i do i i can't i i deal with the toxicity of it because it weighs on it weighs on me i'm a very stable person so what do you get out of watching it? Um, it gives me a time because most of the time, I'll be honest with you, most of the time I'm watching Bloomberg TV, I'm watching political things, um, I'm watching finance or whatever, and it gives me a break, a way to escape. So for me, it's just a break. Now, I will tell you this. I'm able to, when I originally, when I would watch it, it was painstaking for me, right? It was the kind of situation like, oh, my God, I can't watch this. This isn't real. Um, I don't have any toxic relationships in my life, period. Um, not a one, right? Um, I'm a very, very strong and stable person. So for me, for me, it's it's the probably the one time I probably read about 20 hours a week. And if not, nothing else is usually on but CNN or Bloomberg TV. So I'm possibly watching the stock market or I'm watching something like that. So those little two hours in 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 in, in a week or whatever, it, it, it allows me actually to just kind of not think. You know what I mean? It's something that it's like I watch Golden Girls every night before I go to bed. I know what the story is going to begin with. I know what it's going to end with. I don't have to think. So that's what it is for me. I don't put too much into it. I know a lot of people say, oh, I have to detox from social media. Oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's no joke out of this. fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> so I can, oh, okay. That is trauma in action. Chris Rock is literally traumatically prone to what all of his experiences were up to that point and how he has dealt with life on a critical traumatic basis. And this is very important when we talk about abuse from, an, from a child's perspective. R. Kelly, eight years old, 
traumatically abused, seeing a death, getting shot. All of these things are trauma prone to where it makes us numb to things that happen. Dis, oh, what word is that? When you play video games and they're always shooting and, and killing in the games. And then um, it's called d- desensitizing. That is the word. We are being desensitized by Netflix, by Lifetime, by the movie industry, even that clip right there. So I'm going to take you to another clip before we go. Here we go. Chris Rock, who is no stranger to onstage attacks, gave Chappelle a hug, then joked with the audience, Will, was that you? Nobody can forget the moment Will Smith got on stage during the Oscar slapping Rock after a joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Will Smith later apologized for that incident. Now, it's not clear what provoked the person to attack Dave Disturbing news breaking overnight. Dave Chappelle, the comedian, attacked while performing on stage by a suspect reportedly armed with a knife and there's another report a gun all right it looks like a violent encounter happened at the famed hollywood bowl that's in la and carly has been following this all morning and yes. she joins us now carly. a wild story here good morning to you dramatic video showing the aftermath of the violent encounter involving dave chappelle overnight at the hollywood bowl according to local media the person you see here being taken into custody was reportedly armed with a weapon that can eject a knife blade a P- uh, video shows chappelle falling to the ground before the attacker was tackled by security jamie fox also reportedly running on stage to help detain that attacker. The Los Angeles Police Department did respond. Video shows him being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. Cameras were rolling as it was being taped for an upcoming Netflix special, but audience members were... There you go. Netflix is creating life trauma for individuals to literally see. The social media is doing exactly what R. Kelly said. Be very careful and leery of what social media is producing. And we are becoming desensitized by it. I'm gonna share one more clip with you. Right now it's six. Students in Lowellville safe tonight after a shooting incident sends parents running to the school. Sources say a student shot himself inside the cafeteria. And quite frankly, you could never prepare for a situation to occur like this. Police officers from all over the area rushed to the scene to help and get the situation under control. The response of the local jurisdictions that came here was both immediate and complete. Hugs and tears as parents and students try to make sense of the tragedy. My heart was sinking. I just needed to see her and know that she was okay. I I was scared. I was terrified. I thought I was going to die. Now... This is another traumatic event. Those kids in that cafeteria went to have lunch or breakfast and they had to see their fellow classmate commit, try to commit suicide. I don't even know if he did it successfully or not. Now this child who had a parent or some adult in their life who didn't oversee their, their weapon is now traumatized a whole cafeteria of students who just came to have some fun, hang out with some classmates, and they now have to remember this traumatic event for the rest of their lives. These are things that trauma and desensitizing human society brings and breeds for future revenue future revenue of the incarceration system, doing illegal acts, doing heinous attempts because no one feels anything, suicides, cutting, um, raping, you know, um, theft, robbery, all these things, unnecessary. And Netflix, Lifetime, all the social media platforms in some way, shape, or form gets the information out to mass media and they don't help with the healing. This is sad. And this is why we're in this situation right now. 
you know, with the victims being able, oh, I have another clip. I have another uh, situation where I was watching the people's court and this girl literally lied on her boyfriend, falsified a police statement, and she got caught up in the people's court. But this man had to pay $10,000 for him to get out of jail and get this off of his record. He lost his job. She won't allow him to see his children. And she lied on the stand, lost the case because of the fact that he, uh, she told him she was going to tear up all of his stuff. He in turn, um, she says that she's going out with someone. He in turn kisses someone on social media, puts the picture on Facebook and the girl freaks out. The girlfriend freaks out. Trauma, trauma bonds, trauma desensitization. That's what we're dealing with in social media online. And here's the catch. If we don't have parental guidance, that videotape that was supposed to have leaked out with R. Kelly back in the 90s, it's going to be a thousand times harder because people are going to be doing porn right on the camera in their bedrooms and nobody will even know. They won't be able to even know. This is just, it's getting crazy. What are your views about this? I know this is getting deep, but I have to inform and educate from my research what I'm finding. And I mean, the more that I study these things, the more videos that continues to come to me. But then as they come to me, there's no healing in it. It's only raw information. So what does an intelligent or a person with no intelligence do with this information? Do they use it for a future reference to hurt themselves or someone else, or do they heal from it? We as a society must build ourselves to become stronger, greater, more empowered, more connected, because the pandemic has separated so many people and more abuse has happened in during the pandemic than any other time in American history, probably. probably. What's your take on that? Well, everyone, I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. If you are interested in the May 29th, 2022 Cash App upload, please look in the description box below for the information on how to apply. Also, I just want to leave this segment by saying to you that the reason I did this video is to inform my community about the aftermath of how we are affected by the system of slavery. Um, being in this society and being so desensitized by social media and the things that, that we constantly see, even the billboards in our communities, you know, certain things are done uh, subliminally and, you know, hurt people, they don't know how other people are going to be affected by that hurt. So emotional support, be it professional or personal, and sharing our life experience is so important because what that person does with that information on the other side is very vital. Will they take it and use it to manipulate or will they truly help you get through the traumatic experience, you know? Um, I feel deep down inside that we, when Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly returns home, we should never hear of another minor allegation situation ever again. And if he was smart, he would definitely always have a witness, someone who could always say, that this occurred, that occurred, and, you know, just to be on the safe side. And it's so sad. We have to live like that. We have to live like where freedom is never free. It is very expensive and costly. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this video? Do you feel that it was too traumatic to 
listen to? Do you feel that it was something that was helpful and healing? Um, please provide those in the live chat and the comment box. <clears throat> I thank you for joining and being a part of the R. Kelly Nation. And we can't wait to see Robert Sylvester Kelly at home again doing his thing. And I'm going to leave out with a nice little song that I feel is very cute. And it's reflective of Robert Sylvester Kelly and where he comes from. As always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time. Chicago, y'all really know how to do